Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today is a great time to join into the ham radio hobby. I should put that away. There are so many affordable transmitters out there. These little handheld radios, that, that was right side up. You can get them for under 50 bucks. Sometimes you can get them for under 15 bucks. Either way you heard that was actually true, 50 or 15. And there are so many things you can do with ham radio. You can send text messages back and forth. You can talk over voice. You can check your email. You can check the weather. You can talk to astronauts on the space station. You can do all kinds of stuff. But first we gotta figure out what all comes with all of these different radios. And this is the new Baofeng Mini. I gotta get one of the regular size ones to show you that too. The Quan Chang and the original, the OG Baofeng. This is actually a UV5R3 with an extended battery. Normally you can't even tell that there is a battery on one of these guys. Normally it's about that size. So the original Baofeng is smaller than the Quan Chang and we gotta see how the new one stacks up. So let's tear into this thing and see what we get. Oh, there's cables. We have two USB cables, USB A to C and USB A to C. There are two of these here, so we are gonna be giving away one of these on an upcoming Monday night live stream. I do a Monday night live stream every Monday night, hence the name Monday night live stream. And it is 7 p.m. Central Time, and we take out new radio toys and play with them from the perspective of we don't know what we're doing, let's figure it out together, and a good time is had by all. I hope to see you there, and you can win one of these when we do the giveaway. Back to the unboxing. All right, so I don't know why we have two cables. We will figure this mystery out together. We have a very ridiculously long lanyard. This is the longest lanyard I've ever seen in ham radio. This is probably a foot long. Two of these also. I am sensing a trend here. Is there gonna be two radios in this box? Belt clip, two antennas. Two belt clips. Oh, there are two radios in this box. Rock on. There we go. Two radios in the box. So now I gotta get two batteries out of the box. And the belt clip attaches to the battery. And then the battery attaches to the radio. And then there is your size comparison. The Quan Chang is bigger and the OG Baofeng is bigger, but the new one has a bigger screen than the old one does. These antennas here, we call these rubber ducks, usually because they are a little bit flexible. I can hear, I can hear the, sp the spring inside of this. And one of the things that I have been hypercritical about Baofengs is their manuals. Usually there is not a whole lot of manual coverage of what's going on. Maintenance features. And the reason why I'm critical is because Baofeng's been making these things for at least a decade now, and they've sold millions of them, and they should be able to do a better job with the manual. It's like they just, they made their first manual and they went to sleep. Never made any updates. So the manual doesn't look any better. I'm not surprised. Let's see if the radio looks better. First things first, we gotta peel off the peel off thing, and then turn it on. Channel mode. All right, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but I, the sun is, the sun is up there pointing at me and I am in the shade and that timeout went really fast on the screen. Let's see if we can fix the timeout. Scan, radio set, program channel, wireless, CPS, that's new, radio info, and that's all of it. And then these are all submenus, which is pretty cool. This is an entirely new menu system than the original Baofeng. So at least we fixed something there. So as far as like blind assistance, it should be saying voice, language, Roger, beep, backlight, power on image. It should be saying those things, but it's not. So that voice is not terribly useful for that purpose. Let's turn it off. <laughs> the, the three and a half inch floppy disk icon is still prevalent in 2025. We'll do another version of this inside, but what I wanna do real quick is figure out that screen timeout. Power save is on. Let's turn power save off. Nope, still too fast. Backlight, always on. Oh, it's set to five seconds, geez. So the most you can set it to is 20 seconds. Let's set it to 20 seconds. Back to the main screen that we can't see. I can read that it says 145.985. I can't read what the BVFO says at all. If I switch to BVFO, I can see 435, 225. I can see that it's on high power. I can see I'm on channel five, so I can read it. Is there a brightness option in the menu. We have fixed the screen timeout thing. Let's talk about brightness. Turn that beep off while we're in there. Yeah, I don't see anything in there about brightness. Well, hold on. 
there was a backlight thing in there. Yeah, that's just time for backlight. Yeah, I see nothing about brightness. So this is as good as it's gonna get for outdoor usage. So now we're gonna do all the usual stuff that we do when we get a new ham radio. I'm gonna check to make sure that the power output is up to spec. So what I'm gonna use for power is my Shorecom SW102, and I've got the radio attached. I've got an adapter. I've got a ground plane here to add some extra ground potential. May or may not help. We're actually gonna try this without the ground plane after we get done the, the main test. I've got it plugged directly into the radio through an adapter here and then I've got an A and a B button here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the AVFO and switch it over to A and then I'm going to change this out of channel mode into frequency mode so I can type in frequencies directly. We're going to do 146520 and then we're going to test it out. Kilo Mike 9 Golf testing and we've got 2.64 to 1 SWR which kind of stinks and we're putting out 5.6 watts and then let's switch it over to 446 to 70 centimeters, and we're gonna test it again on high power. Kilo Mike 9 Golf Testing, 1.75 to 1 SWR. Oh, I take my hand off the plate, and the SWR gets better. We'll do that again. So we're putting out five watts on 446 at one to one SWR, 1.04 to one SWR, 146520. Let's do this again. Yeah, 2.75 SWR and 5.78 watts out. Okay, let's change power levels. Menu, program channel, because it's a channel thing, not a radio thing. Transmit power is low. And we're gonna do 146.52 again, 2.49 at 2.26 watts out. Okay, 446.000 on low power. We're on 70 centimeters again, 3.98 watts out. It puts out lots of power on 70 centimeters, 1.06 to one SWR. And if I grab onto it, 1.45 to one SWR. So the SWR goes up and the transmitted power goes up as well. We're at four watts if I touch the plate. Interesting to see that. Now, let's try it without the plate, see what kind of results we get. On newer models, it's hard to find this plate. And in the ham radio world, when you are operating an HT, you are actually the counterpoise for the antenna. So this would more simulate what a HT would do in your own hands. All right, so we should still be on 446 on low power. Yep, 446 low power, 1.4 to one SWR and 2.72 watts out. So less power out without the ground plane. Let's uh, switch over to 146.52, and we're still on low power, and 2.54, so the SWR still stinks, and two watts out. Switch over to high power, because we're here, and why not? Now we're on high power, 146.52, 2.8 to one SWR, 5.8 watts out. So at least it puts out a good amount of power in a small package. And this is 446 on high power without the ground plane attached. 1.63, six watts out on 446. So this thing is a banger on power, I like it get a real quick thickness comparison. It looks a little chunkier than the OG Baofeng over here. Comparing it to the Quan Chang, they look like they're about the same thickness. Yeah, they're, they're really close to the same thickness there, but it is noticeably thicker than the OG Baofeng. Another thing that we like to do as hams is test out our harmonics on these radios. And Baofeng has a history that has been extremely difficult for it to shake that these things are dirty. And they haven't been dirty for quite a long time. What I've got here is my Tiny SA kit. Let me show you what all is in here. Obviously, the Tiny SA is in the Tiny SA kit, and this is a spectrum analyzer, and it's an affordable little portable model, and it fits my portable lifestyle pretty well. And what we're gonna do with this is check the harmonics on the radio and see if they are good or are not good. In order to do that, I need a couple of other things that are inside this kit. We take out the false bottom and I need these attenuators in order to make this happen. And these are two 20 dB attenuators, which gives me the 40 dB of attenuation I need so that I don't destroy my tiny SA in the process of running these tests for you guys. And before this, I had a 40 dB attenuator, but it was too big to fit in that kit. And I like that kit so much that I found a solution to the problem, because wherever there's a problem, a ham has a solution. And I think the solution that I need to activate right now is getting inside where I've got better lighting. And now we're back in the shack so we can start working on getting this thing set up in a much easier to see manner. And after moving, I wanna make sure that these connections are good. So I'm gonna use my SMA wrench. So let's turn on the tiny SA and I will get you some screenshots when this is all done, but I got to get it done first. So let's do measure a harmonic of 146.52 megahertz. Let's do a span of zero full span. Let's do a 
display, and I want to draw a line at minus 16.02. This is going to be our pass or fail line. And then I want to set up my level with external gain of 40 dB, which it is set to minus 40 dB, just to be slightly pedantic there. And then when I run this thing, I'm going to do it on 146. 5, 2, 0, like we're supposed to, and we're on high power. And it's going to take a little bit of time for the tiny SA to sort out all of the different signals that it's getting and figure out what's going on. So you can see them all popping up here, and all the levels are going to adjust and everything's going to work its way out. And so far we're looking pretty good. All the harmonics are below the blue line, and they're staying below the blue line. And they're starting to drop off like they should. Excellent. And that two marker, the bottom of the chevron is below the blue is way below the blue line but the bottom of the chevron is where you do the matching and the top of the number two is where it is set there so i just pause the display and then i'm going to do i think it's storage save capture poof and then we're going to call this mini dash h for mini high power enter and we've now saved that file so i can put it on the screen for you let's do for grins let's do low power because these filters change. They, they kind of matter. And then you can see all of those harmonics and they are all below the blue line. So they're all good, even though they're there. And then they'll all start to drop off. So this baby's clean. And if you would like to get any of the Tiny SA stuff, I'll leave a link in the description down below for you, as well as a link to this radio. So this radio still has a few more tricks up its sleeve. And one of those is that it has a Bluetooth app. On the front cover here, there is two icons and I love how it dances back and forth. So I need to cover up the one for the, the phone that we don't like. And it says Play Store link. So let's go to the Play Store and let's get a screen recording going for you. And it says Ola Radio. And it's made by Balfang Electronics Company. So let's install it. And then in the radio, while that's installing, is there anything in here? There is, there's a wireless CPS. So we're ready to open the app. Scheme sharing, one tap save, wireless frequency writing, read write, Bluetooth on the go connect. So you can actually connect it over USB cables too. Sweet. Bluetooth control, large touchscreen for easy control of functions. Interesting. Offline communication, stay connected offline, chat and assist with ease. Not sure how you do that. Solution sharing, get started, one click sharing with groups. Get started. You can use this app to add, configure, or share the app, blah, blah, blah. Privacy policy, all that jazz. You can read that at your leisure. And it wants to wants to do a sign in. I'm not a fan of having to sign in in order to do this. I know why they're doing it, but log in with verify code, log in with account. Right, well, let's register a new user. Send me the code. And it went to my email account. Register. Okay, there we go. Oh, wow, there's a whole bunch of different things that this thing will take care of. Devices, add a device. And it's gonna ask me this question about, do I want to allow it to contact nearby devices? My radio is a nearby device, so yes. And it found my camera. That's not what I want. It found, I don't know what that is. I don't know, I don't know what any of these things are. I think it's missing something. Let's go into the menu here. Menu, wireless CPS is on. And now we've got a little wireless icon up here in the top. And let's try to rescan walkie talkie. Let's connect to the walkie talkie. Then it wants to know what it is. It's a UV5R mini. There's a UV5G mini for you GMRS users. There's the 5R mini. So we're gonna do the 5R mini. Turn on Bluetooth or connect to OTG. OTG being the USB cable. It's actually really cool. You can program it with a USB cable. Select from your phone. Select the walkie talkie model. We did that. I have done all of that. And it says we are connected. Excellent. No, I don't wanna disconnect. I'd like to like do some programming or something. Plans. I don't have a plan. Device detail. There is no device detail. Trends. I'm not worried about trends. Me. Long press. No. All right. Read and write frequency. They did have some pre-programmed channels from the factory. Read and write frequency. And it says program on the radio. It's still pretty slow. While it's doing that, this is actually not a bad size for how, I mean, it's a small radio, but it's it's got thickness. So it makes up for that, makes it easy. And there are all of our channels, nice. So I'm gonna program in a new channel. I'm actually gonna overwrite channel number one. So let's do channel number one. Nope, I know there's a big modify configuration down there. I wanted to see if you could edit it directly. So channel number one, click here to note the channel. Let's note it as the A, P, R, S frequency. And let's change the frequency to 
144.39.390. Okay, 390. Okay, I don't need any transmit tones. I need high, I need wide. I don't need to scan the APRS frequency. And then all that looks good. Let's do next. Channel note is channel two. Let's make this two meter call. How many characters can we put in? That's it, two meter calling. Okay. We're out, of, we're out of letters. That's the channel note, that's the channel name. Let's call this V. I wanna see in the radio if this makes a difference. And that's all uppercase, but I could have put in lowercase letters, I just didn't. And let's do this as 146.520. Let's do 146.520 again for the transmit frequency. No tones, let's make this low power just to see that it does do a different setting and everything else looks good. And if I hit next, it's gonna take me to channel three and I don't wanna do that. Let's see what function settings are. Function settings, timeout timer, squelch, box. So it looks like all the settings that are in the radio. This is this is pretty good. Backlight time, work mode A, B channel display, channel name, A channel display, channel name, frequency channel, do channel name, battery save, timeout timer, tail noise clear. Nice. Auto lock. Ro oh, you can have Roger Beep set up differently for each channel. Sweet. So I've programmed in two channels here. Save the plan and let's do that and then let's write to the device legal and safety risk yes agree i agree and we're programming again so what i did was i programmed in an aprs channel on high power and i programmed in the two meter calling frequency with two different names on low power so i want to see if it'll do power settings per channel and i want to see which display thing it puts up on the screen and we have finished writing and the radio rebooted itself and let's go to memory mode, and that's channel five. That's the wrong direction. There's channel two is V call, and channel one is APRS. So I think we can change the channel name. So let's go back and look at our channel settings, channel one, and I didn't have a channel name at all. So channel note is my own personal notes. Let's do A, P, R, S. Dollar sign, nice, yes. And then let's let's write it to the device. And I have to wait four seconds to do the agreement thing here. And I agree. So we're writing. And we'll see what it comes up with when it's finished writing. It was a lot quicker writing than it was reading, though. Or maybe I was just distracted because I was talking to you guys. Rebooting, go into channel mode. Ah, uh, there it is, APRS. And is there a setting in there? Channel name, channel frequency, transmit power, bandwidth, encryption, signaling. We're not supposed to be able to do encryption. And it's raining now. I want that APRS name to be bigger. That is very small. So in the radio, there was a setting for turning off the dual watch and making it a single. See how that looks. Dual watch was off already. Yep. Didn't change anything. Let's go back to the app. Let's do function settings. That's functions per channel. I want radio settings. It's actually still kind of sunny out too. While it's raining like crazy. Frequency mode, function settings, modify configuration, bulk settings. Okay. And sake, that's what the display looks like indoors out of direct sunlight. all the rain and the sunlight. Those clouds look pretty bad. But those clouds don't look bad at all. And as fast as the rain came, it is gone now. This is the new Baofeng UV5R Mini. This is a pretty cool little radio. I love the fact that we've got all of these Bluetooth programming and OTG programming off of our cell phones that we can look forward to. I do believe that it is trip compatible now. I'll take a look and correct myself if I'm wrong. And if I don't correct myself, then I was right all along. There will be links in the description down below where you can get this radio from my friends over at Radiodity. I think it's gonna shake up some people. A Baofeng that's RF clean, no spurious emissions, decent size, decent features. Come on, Japan, you guys gotta compete. And while we're waiting for that to happen, there's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.